Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Mari. I'm one of the librarians at Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine, and I'm here today with another picture book for Women's History Month. Today we are going to be reading One Plastic Bag about Isitu Chise and the Recycling Woman of the Gambia. This is by Miranda Paul and illustrated by Elizabeth Zanon, and it is published by Millbrook, Millbrook Press. Najau, Gambia. Izatu walks with her chin frozen. Fat raindrops pelt her bare arms. Her face hides in the shadow of a palm leaf basket, and her neck stings with every step. Warm scents of burning wood and bubbling peanut stew drift past. Her village is close. She lifts her nose to catch the smell. The basket tips, one fruit tumbles, then two, then ten. The basket breaks, and Izatu kicks the dirt. Something silky dances past her eyes, softening her anger. It moves like a flag flapping in the wind. It settles under a tamarind tree. Isatu slides a strange fabric through her fingers and discovers it can carry things inside. She gathers her fruits in the bag. The basket is useless now. She drops it, knowing it will crumble and mix back into the dirt. Four goats greet Isitu as her grandmother, Mumbambe, emerges from her hu kitchen hut. Hurry in before the rain soaks your beautiful Mumbaa. Isitu su scuttles in, and grandmother serves spicy rice and fish, rain drums on the creaking aluminum, aluminum roof. I broke your basket, Isitu confesses, but I found this. Plastic, grandmother frowns. There's more in the city. Day after day, as the two watches neighbors tote things in bright blue or black plastic bags. Children serve water and wancho from tiny holes poked in cleared bags. Market trays filled with minties wrapped in rainbows of plastic. The colors are beautiful, she thinks. She swings her bag high. The handle breaks. One paper escapes, then two, then ten. As the two shakes shit sand off her paper, another plastic bag floats by, and she tucks her things. The torn bag is useless now. She drops it to the dirt, as everyone does. There's nowhere to put it. Day after day, the bag she dropped is still there. One plastic bag becomes two, then ten, then a hundred. The plastic isn't beautiful anymore, she thinks. Her feet step down a clear path, and the thoughts float away. Years pass, and Isatou grows into a woman. She hardly notices the ugliness growing around her until the ugliness finds a way to her. Isatu hears a goat crying and hurries it towards grandmother's house. Why is it tied up? Where are the other goats? Inside, the butcher is speaking in a low voice. Many goats have been eating these, he says. The bags twist around their insides and the goat cannot survive. Now three of your goats and so many of the other goats in the village have died. Grandmother Mumbai's uh, powerful shoulders sag. Isatu must be strong and say something, but what? Isatu's feet lead her to an ugly old road. A pile of garbage stands as wide as grandmother's cooking hut. Mosquitoes swarm near dirty pools of water alongside the pile. Smoke from burning plastic stings her nose. Her feet back away. Goats scamper past. Here they forge the trash for food. Her feet stops. She knows too much to ignore it now. Holding her breath, she plucks one plastic bag from the pile. Then two, then ten, then a hundred. What can we do, Isatu asks her friends. Let's wash them, Fatim says, pulling out Oso Omo soap. Mariam grabs a bucket and Incha fetches water from the well. Peggy finds clothespins and they clip the washed bags onto the line. As the bag dries, Isatu watches her sister crochet. Can you teach me? Well, she, she says, yes. Her sister shows Isatu the stitches and hands her a metal tool. Isatu's fingers busy themselves in and out and around. Jerifcha, thank you. Isatu finds a broomstick and carries her own tool, carves her own tool from the wood. What is that for? Is the two pauses. She and Peggy have an idea, but will their friends think it's crazy? Will the idea even work? 
Nervously, she explains the plan. The friend agrees to help, then two, then five. The woman cuts a bat, cut bags into strips and roll them into spools of plastic thread. Before long, they teach themselves how to crochet with this thread. How is the work? asks grandmothers. Nadanke, Nadanke answers Izitu, slow. Some people in the village laugh at us, others call us sturdy, but I believe what we're doing is good. The women crochet by candlelight away from those who mock them. Until morning comes, when they will no longer need to work in secret. Fingers sore and blistered, Isidu hauls the recycled purses to the city. One person laughs at her, then two, then ten. One woman lays Dallasy coins into the table. She chooses a purse and shows it to her friend, then two, then ten. Soon everybody wants one. Isitu fills her own purse with Dallasy. She zips it shut and rides home to tell grandmother that she has made enough to buy a new goat. When she passes the pile of rubbish, she smiles because it is smaller now. She tells herself one day it will be gone and my home will be beautiful again. And one day, it was. In the back, there's an author's note talking about the this place, Gambia, and um, two of the women. And there's um, a pronunciation for some of the words that were um, I didn't do a great job with. A timeline of what happened and some books suggested for further reading. And here is a picture of the woman that this book is about. The end. I hope you enjoyed this book about Isitu Sise, and I hope that you um, try to think of ways that you can use recycling in your own house to make the world a little bit better place. My name is Sarah Mari. I'm one of the librarians at Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.